During the spring of 1917, nearly half of the entire French infantry mutinied against their commanders on the Western Front. 554 men were sentenced to death, and though 90% were later granted reprieves, leaders were shot as a warning to others. One man was found guilty of having stated, we need to end the war, not through victory, but through revolution. In rural Oklahoma, two months later, a coalition of poor whites, blacks, and Native Americans would attempt to do exactly that. Well, the Green Corn Rebellion took place in Oklahoma in 1917. It is a unique occurrence in the United States, and although an anomaly, I think it's um, one of the most important events, uh, certainly the most important event in U.S. history that no one knows about. When World War I was joined by the United States, they immediately imposed conscription. They had officials going out and hunting down, you know, anyone who looked of age. If they couldn't show their draft card, they would be taken. Oklahoma was a cauldron of activism. At that moment in time, the Socialist Party had been organizing there already for 15 years. Regular trade unions were the railroad unions and others were very, very strong in Oklahoma. The Wobblies were very strong. Um, the Socialist Party had been organizing tenant farmers and sharecroppers, that is, landless farmers. Sharecropping is really harsh because basically they raise the crop and then they have to give a certain percentage of it, usually about 75% of it, any profits to the uh, landowner. If there is no profit, then they simply are made to leave. You know, they actually are then in debt to the owner of that property. Every member of the family works. Even the smallest child contributes to the survival of the family. And then the able-bodied 18-year-old is absolutely essential to the survival of the family the boys, and here's who they were going to take away from them. So they had a very fundamental, basic reason for rebelling, because, they, you know, it was life or death. So they organized themselves. And most of these people were illiterate, so the Communist Manifesto was actually um, read aloud, you know, and the preachers of these, you know, Baptist churches actually were preaching the social gospel, as they called it. But they organized themselves into this rebellion and rose up in August 1917. The leadership was really the um, Native American Muscogee. The Muscogee people, their land had all been allotted, all of the Native American land had been allotted in Oklahoma, and most of it lost. It was because of oil that they allotted it, desperately poor, working as sharecroppers and tenant farmers because they, they had no land, they had been taken away from them. But they had a very militant history of resistance, you know, that went back. Uh, a couple of hundred years. The green corn of August every year is the most important holiday for the Muscogee people. These are the, they're also called Creeks and Seminoles, Choctaws. They're mostly Creeks. Uh, they call themselves Red Sticks. And the Red Sticks had formed um, 150 years before to fight against relocation. Um, that finally happened in uh, 1830, where they were relocated from the southeast to Oklahoma Territory. So the Green Corn Rebellion was, was that kind of uh, very organic peasant rebellion, but with ideas that had come in and that they had absorbed, which made it a very potent um, formulation. So their manifesto was is absolutely amazing, you know, naming the capitalists, the owners, the uh, they had a concept, they knew that they were a part of something larger in the world. The green corn that comes in August 
It's not edible at that point in time, but it can be picked and stored. Their plan was to gather up the green corn and, you know, to feed themselves, and they were going to march all the way to Washington. They were going to organize themselves, do some damage in that area. They cut gas lines, electrical lines. They burned bridges. They created a, a kind of liberated zone for them, themselves. And then they stopped and rested, which wasn't a very, um, very good thing to do. Because by that time, the several counties, uh, the sheriffs had organized uh, posses of the, um, you know, the shopkeepers and the, the owners of things, the bankers and all to come and surround them. So they didn't get out of that area. They were arrested, imprisoned. But their plan was to go through Missouri and then into, down into Louisiana where, you know, there was all this organizing going on, and then to go and to gather people with them to march on Washington and overthrow the government. That was their goal, stated goal, was to overthrow the government. Yeah.